Hi everyone. So you're probably here because you want to prepare for that, you know, upcoming coding interview, or you're just interested in uh, keeping your coding skills sharp. Um, I'm about to just start a series here uh, where we basically go through majority of the questions in LeetCode and provide um, a video explanation of all the solutions. I know when I was going through the process of going through these LeetCode, sometimes just simply reading the solution is not sufficient for me. Um, I think one of the best ways to really understand the question is through teaching. So um, I'm going to try to use this as a good platform to both A, sharpen my skills and B, uh, hopefully provide a detailed explanation on each solution to problems. Um, and hopefully this will help your journey to become a very successful software engineer. So uh, why don't we stop blabbering and let's go right into the problem. So the first question we're going to go uh, trying to solve is a very easy one. It's probably what everyone starts off with. Uh, and that is called uh, the two sum problem. So in this problem, if we read the question, it says, given an array of integers, return indices of two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. So in this statement, we have to pay attention to a couple of things. We have to pay attention to what we're given and what we expect to return back. So um, luckily in Lico, they actually tell us that um, on the right over here already. Um, but in the interviewing question, this may not be the case. So I highly recommend um, just getting to the habit of identifying what are your inputs and what are your, is your expected output. So in this case, your expected inputs are two things. Uh, a nums param, which is an array of numbers, uh, and specifically integers. So not no like decimal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you're giving a target. Well, a target as being a number as well. So what this really means is that you know, you're given an array, and in that array of numbers, you find two elements that add up to this particular target. There's another statement here on the bottom that says, you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. This is kind of, kind of important. Um, sometimes when you go through an interviewing process, uh, an interviewer may, um, you, may, you may sound like, oh, why are they saying this very obvious assumption? Or why are they saying these things? Um, sometimes uh, this is a very big hint um, to how to optimize your possible solution. Um, so in this case, you know, we're given, we know that, okay, we don't have to put an error check to see if there's a valid solution or throw it off. Because we know by the assumption here, there's exactly one solution. So we could pretty much uh, don't have to check if the, the array is uh, size zero or anything like that. We can just know that, assume that, okay, cool. There's one, one there's be a one solution. So forget that part. The second element question here says like, the same element cannot be used twice. So meaning that you can't go like, okay, if the target is like, for example, four, you can't just go, oh, I'm just gonna get returned zero, zero as your solution because that's not valid. So why don't we uh, go through the next phase, which is trying to understand, um, look at an example, what this question is really asking for. So in this case here, they're looking at, okay, well, given an array two, seven, 11, 15, and given a target of nine, what two elements in here will equal to nine? Let's think about it. I know in a very easy, you could probably say, oh yeah, it's just the first two elements. Great. Um, that's definitely the solution, which is a number at zero and num at one, position zero and position one, two plus seven equals nine. Great. And you return an array of zero and one. But you have to think about it. How do you actually get this number, right? So there's, if you really want to think of like the simple way, um, you could think about, okay, I could use either A, a brute force way, because I could always go, all right, I'm going to get, I know my first for loop would be like, you know, checking two. I could compare each of these values one by one and add it and see if they check to be nine. Or I could go, it'll be go like two, we'll check with seven, that equals nine, that's great, but assuming, uh, let's let's make an assumption like this target is like 17, right? It'll be like two, you know, check here. No, that's not 17. Check the next number. No, that's not 17, but two and 15, that's 17. That's great. Then you could do that. But two for loops may not be the most optimal solution because that's in time complexity wise, that's O N squared. Um, and if you, I'll probably go later on and talk about time complexity, space complexity in a later video. But at this point in time, that's probably not the best solution, but it is a solution nonetheless. Um, so let's let's think about other ways of trying to solve this particular problem. Um, if you know a little bit of math, I think um, you could probably already know like, oh wait, um, I actually 
don't have to write two for loops. I can actually just go through it once and identify whether or not the second number exists because there's exactly one solution. We know that, right? So we can actually just go through it once and know if it exists or not. Uh, but but how, how do I do that, right? So this is where we kind of think about, okay, what's available to us? What kind of data structure is available to us and what kind of uh, mathematics is available to us, right? This is a pretty easy one. Um, so if you think about it, um, all I really need to do is actually just take the target. Maybe as you go through these numbers, um, so try to store something, right? We could store a value and put it onto like some sort of storage location, um, and then look look for the uh, look for that what we're trying to store. So what I'm trying to say is like, try to think about it. What am I trying to store? I know you're probably some of you smart guys there already know. Um, you can simply just go and look at take at your target number nine and minus two, which in this case would be seven, right? So you could store it in uh, store the number seven with the second uh, with the key as seven and the index as the uh, index of where that location is. So as you iterate, you could go and just check this dictionary or check this thing, the storage device, right? So what I'm trying to do, so let's let's get into the code. Um, by the way, this video is completely raw. I don't bother um, editing it because I just wanted to give you the real deal. Um, so if some things I slip up or some comments, I'm, do, I'm just doing it in one take. So please forgive me, um, but let's just go uh, trying to solve this problem uh, right now. Cool. So I think that if I'm looking at doing it this way, um, if we look at time complexity wise, um, I'm only gonna go through this like once and then I'll have, I'll know, uh, I'm creating like basically a dictionary that stores the, you know, the target minus the actual value itself. Um, so as, as a key, and then you're pretty much, it's an O of N time complexity. Um, while on the space wise, it's probably gonna be relatively the same O of N. So I think that's pretty efficient. Um, and let's, let's put some code on the screen so you guys probably could follow along a little bit better. Um, the, so the language I'm gonna use right now is gonna be JavaScript, um, if you probably already see it here on the right. So I personally like to change it into a more ES6 context. So I change it here, move that, and give my wonderful arrow function. Oops, not the question mark, but the arrow function. All right, cool. So the storage or the data structure I wanna use here is some sort of hash map or just a simple like dictionary or in simple terms, just a simple object, right? So I'm gonna create something called right, like storage. So you can think about this as like as your temporary memory um, to store the values that we were mentioning earlier, you know, the nine minus two. And then what do we do here? Okay, cool. So what the next step is pretty much, okay, now we have a storage device. Um, now we have to iterate through this particular array. So let's do that. For, uh, let, I'm gonna use the more ES6 um, syntax, index and num uh, of nums dot entries, entry, oh, I can't spell today, entries. <clears throat> cool, cool. So what am I doing here? Um, so as I iterate through every element in nums, right here, one, two, three, four, I'm basically extracting the index and the actual number out so I could use it uh, to compute uh, to see what I'm storing in this storage device, right? So one of the things I wanna first check is um, it, the number I'm trying to check is that even containing here in the first place. So what I mean by that is if my storage uh, given that particular number, right? In this case, two, uh, in this case, two, does that exist? Is that undefined in here? In this, in the first iteration, yeah, undefined. Is that undefined? If it is undefined, um, oops, not undefined, actually, I was wrong. Let's think about it. We probably think of the opposite, which is, let's see if that number we're looking for, does that exist? In here if it does exist then we can actually return that particular element out um, so what I mean by that is okay so in the storage in this case two 
I'm checking to see uh, if it does not equal to undefined, right? If it does not equal to undefined, it means that, oh, cool, it does exist in here. So what does that mean? Um, it means that I can actually just return the results now. Return an array of storage, storage, store it. Oh, God, I can't spell today. Storage at the number and return the index. And that will be your solution. Um, but if it's not there, if it doesn't exist, I mean, if it doesn't exist, what do you do? So that's the thing that we we're talking about earlier. I'm going to actually go storage, storage at the target minus the number will equal to the index. So you see what I'm trying to do here? It's simply, I'm creating an object, right? Example. So what I'm doing here, I'm creating an object, and for example, I'm gonna use this, use this example as uh, what we're trying to do here. So as we iterate, so the first time we go through this loop, we're gonna go hit two, right? Um, two, so in our index in here, in this case, I'm just gonna say index, so you know index will equal to, to uh, zero, your number will equal to two in this first iteration, right? Um, so what do I do? I'm gonna check if the storage, I'm just gonna also put store, this is this thing here is storage, right? So I'm gonna see like, okay, well, um, the storage at uh, number two, does it exist? Well, no, it doesn't, right? Because it's an empty object. So what do you do in the first element? Well, I'm gonna take the target in this case is nine. So I'm gonna go nine minus two uh, in this case would be seven. That's pretty much my, my key, right? Um, and the value I'm putting in there is the index, which is zero. So now I have a key and an index of where that particular element would be, right? So now it goes in here, it's done this statement and it's gonna loop back again. And now the index is gonna be at one while your value is gonna be seven. Um, and it's gonna do the check again. All right, so does storage at number seven, does that exist in this, in here? Well, we just had something in here. Yeah, it sure does. So what I'm doing here right now is like, okay, cool. So we know that this particular number is defined in the storage. Well, we could just simply just return the current index and the index of the previous um, number that was stored in here. So we're returning what they wanted, which is the index of the two numbers that when added together would equal to nine. So let's, let's try to run this and see if it solves the problem. Uh, right, submit code, cross my fingers. Oh no, error, what did I do wrong in here? Alrighty, to some. I had capital, huh, funny, funny, cool. Cool, all right, so we solved the problem. So that's it, that's your uh, question number one. Um, hopefully this is a relatively uh, good explanation. I'm gonna try to improve as I go along um, and I'll take a lot of feedback. If you guys want more explanation on how to solve some of these problems, feel free to ping me or comment below. Um, but this is a work in progress. I'm no expert and of course this is all in one cut. I'm not gonna chop things up. If I screw up on screen, you're gonna capture the raw thing, the real me. Real me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Question number one, done. Now. Wait for next week or maybe tomorrow. We'll see uh, for question number two. See you guys.